We've got all the stories coming up this morning. And joining me to talk all about it, Fox Business Network's Dagan McDowell, Peebles Corporation founder, chairman, and CEO Don Peebles back with us, and Fox News contributor Kat Tim. Good to see you. Good to see you. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Let's get into it. We got to get into it. What a story that we're going to be talking about this morning. Things are getting tense. Fair statement. They're not yeah, listening no. to you. <laughs> Did they not watch Fair Mornings statement. with Maria last week Look. and listen to you about mending fences? Mm. Uh, because, again, the tension and the, the pushback is worse than it was even a week ago. Yeah. yeah look, I was in Washington uh, yesterday, all day yesterday, and there is a a search for really what the agenda is going to be and how to be a part of shaping that agenda. Uh, I think that what um, happened with Elizabeth Warren cuts both ways. I think it plays to uh, Trump's base that uh, the Democrats um, are obstinate, but also I think on the uh, Democratic side, it continues to make her like a folk hero to the far uh, left. And, uh, and so that'll, I think, fuel her fire. Um, but uh, I think the majority leader was right to begin to clip her wings a little bit. You think it was right? Well, that, that's what we want to get into this morning because we're going to lead off with that story right away. Uh, we have more for that for you on this. But joining the conversation coming up is former U.S. ambassador to the U.N. and senior fellow at the American Ent Enterprise Institute. That's John Bolton is here. Reagan economic advisor Art Laffer is with us and Ohio Congressman Jim Jordan also with us. Plus, Illinois Congressman Adam Kinzinger is here. And the CEO of Harley <laughs> Davidson joins us, Matt Levatic. Uh, he's uh, reporting earnings today and is bringing a new bike to the platform. So we'll talk with him about Harley. Take a look at this, though. Uh, this is what we're just speaking about. Don Peebles uh, referring to this. Senate Democrats once again holding an all-night session opposing Attorney General nominee is Senator Jeff Sessions. His confirmation vote expected around 7 p.m. Eastern tonight. But last night during the debate, Senator Elizabeth Warren was banned from speaking on the Senate floor after reading a quote from former Senator Ted Kennedy back in 1986. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell invoked an arcane rule that effectively silenced Warren for the rest of the session. Listen to this. He is, I believe, a disgrace to the Justice Department, and he should withdraw his nomination and resign his position. You stated that a sitting senator is a disgrace to the Department of Justice. I call the senator to order under the provisions of Rule 19. Wow. Okay, so you were in Washington yesterday, John Peebles, because you were the head of the Congressional Black Caucus until yesterday. Yeah, the chairman of the Congressional Black Caucus Foundation Board until yesterday. So what happened? What was your reaction to what went down last night? Well, you know, look, I think that Elizabeth Warren, uh, she read two um, letters, if you will, one from Senator um, Edward Kennedy and also one from Coretta Scott King. That's right. And, uh, and I think that um, what there is, there's a rule in the Senate that you can't disparage other members. And so there's an argument, look, on the Democratic side that he's not a senator right now. He is a nominee, and so therefore it's fair game. But I think that, you know, right now the Democrats are trying to find their footing they, uh, and what their agenda is going to be. They cannot continue to evolve into what we're seeing right now, yeah. which is the party of no. They can't just be protesters. Well, um, yeah, they've got to be. And that's what she does all the time, Kat Tim. Yeah, I think that Elizabeth Warren sees this as an opportunity. You think about how well Bernie Sanders did, people like her and Bernie Sanders, their message is resonating more with younger people and the, the old Democratic Party clearly things didn't really work out for them and that something has to change. Uh, I have my own issues with uh, Jeff Sessions as a libertarian moral along the uh, criminal justice side of things, but it's clear that what this is is political. It's not going to change anything. Um, she, I think they're just, she just sees an opportunity and she took, uh, tried to take this advantage of that. This is not just an individual issue with Elizabeth Warren or of even, even Chuck Schumer. And, and I talked about this last week, the last time you were on. There is a movement particularly in social media, by people who were so angry that Hillary Clinton lost. They don't look at the governorship's loss. They don't look at the, the balance in the Senate or the House. They don't even look at the, the shift toward Republicans in state legislatures across the country. They just think that Hillary Clinton should have won, and we are going to fight the Republicans at every step mm. in the next four years. And, right. But they're under, these lawmakers are under a lot of pressure from a lot of celebrities. Yeah. And they don't look right? at themselves either, most importantly, which is how they're you, you need to look at yourself. Way, how about one more thing? They're not listening to the people. Right. I mean, at this point, people want to see business get done. 
and they're obstructing the process mm -hmm. by delaying these these confirmation. They're so listening I thought you to the all their base. No, they are time. listening mm -hmm. to the far left base, the Sarah Silvermans of the world, mm -hmm. who wanted a, a military overthrow of the presidency. Yeah. But they're, they're <laughs> Call for that online. But they're not listening to their base. Their base. Look, the Democratic Party was broad and has been it very was broad. broad. Right. They are alienating their most dependable support base because their base did not turn out in this election. Had it turned out in this election, Donald Trump would be a private citizen working up the street from here, and Hillary Clinton would be in the Oval Office. Right. So, look, the the the, par the two-party system has winners and losers, and so you, as a party on the outside who loses, you live to fight another day, and you build an agenda for that next fight. And the challenge with the Democratic Party right now is they're not building that agenda. Do you see any agenda building right now? No, Bernie just, Sanders and Elizabeth Warren are running the party. Come on, I mean, is that is, both is that a fair point? Yeah, is both that a not fair elected, statement? Both president. Uh, Nancy Pelosi as well. I mean, she's oh also right there. <laughs> well, that's the cause because, and by the way, that's where the what the real failing here for the Democratic Party is, is that there's no, the leadership is now coming from the United States Congress, the House of Representatives, a system where leadership comes from seniority. So you have Pete, nearly, you have three to four nearly octogenarians who are leading the party's agenda. That, and then Elizabeth Warren all by herself with Bernie Sanders to the left here. Yeah. So there's no new ideas. I knew that was going to happen when Tim Ryan lost. Look, we had Tim Ryan on a number of times, and we all said, look, this guy's moderate. He's in the middle. And yet, they reelected. Uh, they, they, they reappointed Nancy Pelosi. Which, oh boy. Somebody who, <laughs> somebody who lives in the bubble of San Francisco. Mm -hmm. the, but their agenda for four years is going to be the agenda of no. The agenda of semantics of word games and placing blame on whatever the Republicans do. You saw yeah. that from day one with uh, the repeal and replace on Obamacare, mm -hmm. that it was going to be chaos, that it was going to kill people, that it was going to take people's health insurance away. This is nothing, this is a, about nothing more and it's, than I mean, yesterday with play. Betsy DeVos also, same thing. It's not just, oh, I disagree with her politically or, oh, I didn't like the way she was at her hearing, more like kids are going to die. Yeah. It's, it's, and nothing is ever, let's have a that's conversation, that's it's irresponsible. all, let's, it's the end of right. the world and everyone's going to die. But, which she, I don't, but she is for school choice. Exactly. I don't even understand the pushback on Betsy DeVos. I do, I understand Tell the pushback. Us. Well, I think the pushback is, is that there's a question about her capabilities to run the department. However, the president gets to pick um, who he has in his cabinet. If, if they're not criminals and they are remotely qualified, it's his choice. And we have to put the confidence in his ability to lead. I, I don't think, think, I, also, think I think it was also a referendum on unions. It was a re voting for her was a referendum on the union stranglehold on school children across the country who treat, I, I think Kennedy tweeted this yesterday or said it on her show that the, the unions treat the, the, both the parents um, like pariahs. They, they, right. well, they're, they're anti, they, they, don't, they don't want school choice because that will require them to compete for their product that they're offering. Right. And that's the real challenge here. I don't think the Democratic Party is going to evolve into this party of no. I think you're going to see in the midterm elections a, 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 a whole different perspective. Younger people running for office, people from the far left. I think you're going to see somewhat of a Tea Party movement the equivalent in the Democratic side. And it's going to shake up the party. That's the pathway to a future for the Democratic Party, mm -hmm. is shaking it up, not having this left um, agenda that can't be implemented. But do you see anybody on the horizon who actually fits that bill? Yeah, I think you're seeing um, you know, more, uh, more um, centrist Democrats running for office. Uh, uh, Jim Johnson running for governor of New Jersey, a much okay. more centrist uh, Democrat. I think you'll see more of that in, um, around the country. Uh, there are member people getting ready to run for Congress. Uh, some of these incumbents are going to get challenged in the primary, okay. seriously. Meanwhile, the, these sessions continue, and he still doesn't have his, his cabinet in place. Donald Trump actually tweeted yesterday a disgrace that my, my cabinet has not been the, uh, put in place yet. The and numbers are shocking. So 12 out of 15 cabinet officials were at work under President Obama 14 days into the administration. For Bush and Clinton, it was 13 of 14. Donald Trump still has 10 open cabinet positions 18 days into his administration. Yeah, and, and, yep. and you think people are not going to...
going to remember this. I mean, when they are up for re-election, when they are when they face their own elections in 2018, will the people remember well, how you know, they obstructed? I think to the credit of Donald Trump, they probably won't because he's not ele he's yeah. not allowed this to affect his agenda whatsoever. He has been moving his agenda forward since the day. Well, he got yes sworn and in. no, John. So, I, I mean, let, let's face it. I mean, he's he put that travel ban in place and he didn't have anybody around him. Maybe that's why it was bungled. Probably so. I think he look. He deserves to have his cabinet. The Democratic Party would be well served to go ahead and allow him to have an orderly um, transition in, into the government and have his cabinet quickly and then debate the issues of where he wants to take the country and where their party wants to take I, the country. Mark my words, Andy Puzder is going to have trouble now getting um, uh, getting confirmed. Or how about Stephen Mnuchin? Puzder, because if he, if we found out yesterday that he paid taxes on an undocumented employee after his nomination as labor secretary, it seems little, but they're looking for one reason. Right. And they're and looking saw, for one person to take right. the fall. And you saw those two Republican senators who um, went, came out against Betsy That's DeVos. Watch, it could happen in, in greater numbers with Andy. I agree. Puzder. We'll watch that one. We'll take a short break. When we come back, a state of emergency declared in Louisiana, meanwhile, this morning, after multiple tornadoes ripped through parts of New Orleans and the Northeast. Bracing for heavy snow. We've got the forecast. Tell you what you're up against uh, with the weather this week. 